message of hope, love, healing, freedom. With God, all things are possible. You will not be consumed. You are no fastcomer. As a man, take it in his heart, so it is. Voice of Destiny, time for real talk, dealing with real life issues. Hello viewers, my name is Haruna Goro, the senior pastor of Jesus Center in Vinduk, Namibia with branches all over the nation. We also have branches in Angola. We thank God for what God has been doing through this church. We started in a little shack some years ago, a church that looked as if we were going nowhere. And for about four years, nobody even had a bicycle. Everybody was doing what I would call legacy bands. That means they were working on food with dust everywhere. But the Lord gave us a promise that as we stay focused with his word and keep teaching the people the principles of scripture and living, he was going to transform their life. This was a squatters camp where even the police will not go to when there is crime. But the Lord gave me a word that is going to turn that place to an oasis. It's going to be light in the midst of darkness. To the glory of God, that church is not just transforming that area, but changing the entire nation and is touching other nations. And it is from there today we are coming to you with this wonderful encounter church service. I am sure you're going to be mightily blessed. So call your friends and, uh, and your family and sit down or wherever you are, relax as we get into the service, this encounter time that I'm sure your life is not going to be the same. Let's get in there.
come on lift your hands to Jesus as we begin to worship him we magnify a living God hallelujah family. I'd like to testify of the goodness of the Lord in my life. The testimony I have today is a testimony about my salvation. My journey to salvation and to life began on the 11th of January 1998. It was at the back door church called Jesus Center. And before that, I was living a life of crime, drugs, have no value for human life. Uh, I believe that I was a Christian because I came from a 
a Lutheran background. But it was actually my cousin Moses who brought me to the knowledge of the truth because for one year he's been bothering me preaching the gospel to me and I told him I didn't believe in God. So uh, I didn't know who I was. I had no purpose for life. I did not know my identity. I did whatever I wanted to do to please me. I have no fear for anybody. So every night in the night we go into operation with these gangs to fight other gangs or to, to take things from people or rape or, you know, commit all sorts of crime. Because I believe that was part of what I was doing. I mean, that was life for me. But in 1998, the 11th of January, around 9 o'clock, I was invited to a church and I was face to face with the preaching of the word. And this was fire for fire. I've never heard the gospel preached like this before. At that time, I was having so many things I needed to give up. This was drugs and cigarettes. I'm talking about women in my life that I needed to let go. But this, I was struggling between letting go and continuing living the life I was living. Because I was satisfying the pleasures of life, you know, the lust of the eye. But when I heard this gospel being preached by this man, I, there was no other way I can go back because it was either I, I receive Christ, I go back to the street and die. 1998 began a good journey for me. My life was transformed. I discovered who I was. I discovered my purpose for living. And the Lord gave me a name among my people. Now you can go anywhere in the corners of this country. You mention my name. They say, we know that person. It all began in the church of Jesus Center by the preaching of the word of God. I'll tell you now we know who we are. We have discovered my purpose for life. I'm developing and I'm demonstrating my God-given abilities. I'm not yet where I'm supposed to be, but I know by every day when the word is preached, I will become a better man one day. May the Lord bless you in Jesus' name.
Somebody is not excited today. Yeah. Are you excited? Are we ready to do some more dancing before we get into the world? Happy. Let's get into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Are you having an encounter? Even if we close the service now, I am sure somebody already has encountered their miracle. Those of you watching us by the way of television, I am sure where you are in your sitting room or wherever you may be watching us, the power and the anointing of God is there with you. Open up your heart, call your neighbors, call your friends, call even your enemies and tell them it's an encounter on television. And I'm sure the presence of God is where you are. The anointing of God is there where you are. Somebody will be getting healed. Somebody will be getting delivered. Somebody shout hallelujah. Wow! My God, my God, my God. Somebody ready for the word? You! I felt like we should just go on singing. Especially, you know, the African dance. Man, there's nothing like African dance. You know, but, but, but we have to go on with the word. Anybody got your Bible? Thank you. Let's appreciate our worship team. That was great, great, great. And ministering to those of us that are here and those that are watching by the way of television. Because we are believing God for an encounter. An encounter does not necessarily speak of excitement, even though you may be excited when you have an encounter. But but it's speaking about colliding with destiny. Meeting with somebody or something that brings about change. And when you meet something that you've been looking for and have not found where to locate it, you don't need anybody to exalt you, to steer you up, or encourage you to get excited. So once again, I want to appreciate all of us for being here today. And as I, 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 I always say, that when God is doing something, you, you, you don't have to fake it. You don't have to explain it. You don't have to make believe. You know that you know God is in the place. And I'm very certain, I'm very sure that all of us today are going to live here completely changed, completely revived, completely, you know, transformed. Uh, And that happens through the power of his word. And if you have your Bibles, I want us to make our confession. You just stand with your Bible, and if you have an iPad or whatever, you know, wherever your, your, the word is, from where you read, we, we're going to make our confession at the count of three. One, two, three, go. This is my Bible. It's God's word to me. I am what the word says I am. I can do what God's word says I can do. God's word declares me blessed. I agree with the word I'm blessed. Too blessed to be cursed. I receive the word today. I'm not only a hearer of the word. I'm also a doer, and I'm blessed in all my ways. Thank you, Father, for your word. I receive it right now in Jesus' name. Somebody go ahead and celebrate what you're about to receive. Go ahead and celebrate what you're about to receive. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You may be seated as you sit down majestically in his presence. Just salute the person beside you. Just greet him or her. Introduce yourself to the person and let the person know you are, you, you, you are excited to be in church today. I want you to just hold that neighbor's hand and squeeze it gently. I didn't say break it. I said squeeze it gently. That neighbor, just hold that hand. Hold that hand and say to your neighbor, say, neighbor, neighbor. you are really blessed. You are highly favored to be sitting next to a blessed man or a blessed woman who's ever Touch me and feel me while you can. Because very soon, with the encounter I receive from God, before you see me, you may have to go through the gate man, through the receptionist, and through my PA to gain entrance to see me. Look at me now, neighbor. This is the worst you'll ever see me. I just started a brand new life. Somebody, if you believe that, go ahead and celebrate. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, 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 as we build our case for today, I, I want to talk about take it back by force. Somebody shout, take it back by force. Take it back by force. Say, by force, by force. It's important for you and I to know, and when I say by force, I'm not talking about killing people. You know, because as I share this, I must be watchful that uh, people understand. I'm talking about having a spirit that is a never giving up spirit. I'm talking about tenacity. I'm talking about having God. I'm talking about somebody that, that knows what belongs to him knows what belongs to her and will do everything as an individual that you need to do to ensure the delivery of that thing that belongs to you. Not killing people, not burning people, not fighting people, not bewitching people as some people do in Africa, but just positioning yourself where you spot what belongs to you and go after it with every fiber of your being, engaging your mind, engaging your energy, engaging your wisdom, engaging the, the blessing of, of people that are around you through relationship. And whatever you can do to get to where God wants you to get to, you should be prepared to do it so that you can take what is yours back by force from the enemy. And that enemy is not your neighbor, it's not your wife, it's not your husband, it's not any other person around, but it's the devil who hates you. John chapter number 10, verse 10, tells us that the thief comes not but for to steal. But I am come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. And today I prophesy abundant life to somebody. I say I prophesy abundant life to somebody. If your amen is louder, that means you believe this and so shall it be to you. I say I prophesy abundant life in the name of Jesus. Everything that has stolen from you. The writer of Proverbs says when a thief is caught, he will be made to pay back seven times whatever he has stolen. Somebody shout restoration. restoration. Shout recovery. recovery. In the book of Kings, there is an account of a woman a, who, who lost everything and because there was a drought and she had to leave her town, her, her nation to go to exile. And on returning, because she had done good, she had planted seeds in the lives of the servants of God. She's been a blessing to the kingdom of God and to humanity. So when she came back on, the, on her return, the king had to order the restoration of everything that she lost for seven years, whether it be material things, whether it be the farm, whether it be animals. In fact, the Bible even says that, that everything that was taken had to be given back to this lady. And I want to say to us here, the plan of God for each of us is restoration. You can't sit there with the grace of God, the anointing of God, the word of God that lives and abides forever. And then be a punching bag for the devil. God forbid. I say in any way the devil has humiliated you. In any way he has frustrated you. In any way he has reproached you. When the anointing of God comes upon you. When the grace of God comes upon you. When the unction of the Holy Spirit comes upon you, your struggles become a thing of the past. And I sense within my spirit that this is a prophetic service. This is a prophetic word for somebody that is sick and tired of being sick and tired. To let you know, after today, your story will change. I say, after today, your story will change. I see there's a new chapter about to open in somebody's life that is watching me in Madagascar. Somebody is watching me in Europe and some people in West Africa, North, East, and South Africa. God is about to change your story. Can you say amen? amen. Right from here, where we call Okuriangava Park, where it used to be a shack, where even the police couldn't come to when there was a crime. But the Lord told us to come here and raise up a banner for him. 
and raise the lighthouse for him. And a city on a hill cannot be hidden. Matthew chapter 5 tells us you are the light of the world. You are the salt of the earth. And we are the hope of this generation. Everything the world is trusted in is failing them, falling right before their faces. And I want to let you know, as a child of God, as a believer in Jesus Christ, you hold the keys to the kingdom. And whosoever you release and command to be free shall be free. You command your neighbors to be free, your relatives to be free. Guess what? All the demons in hell can keep them down. Can somebody say amen to that? Somebody shout amen. amen. So God is setting us up as his last hope. And we are the ones that carry what the world is looking for. Don't be a child of God and begin to envy what the world has. We are told in the book of Isaiah, chapter number 60, from verse 1 to about verse 5, paraphrasing because of time. Arise and shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Behold, darkness will cover the earth and gross darkness will cover the people. But God is going to rise upon his people. And then it talks about what will happen. Then verse 5 talks about the riches that will come back to the church. Are you not happy to know that whatever the world is, is enjoying now originally belongs to you? And you're taking it what? You're taking it what? Somebody shout, take it. I take it back by what? By force. We are not going to rob shops. We are not robbing companies. We are not stealing from anybody. We are just positioning ourselves and saying, it's time for the kings to reign. It's time for the princes to take over. It's time for the queens to begin to shine. That when you as a daughter of God come out on the street, nobody has to introduce you. Just your appearance will introduce you. I'm telling you, somebody is about to be introduced to people that never knew you. There are people that know what I'm talking about today. Hallelujah. Take it back by, by force. Get violent or you'll be violated. Contain for what is yours. First Timothy chapter number 6 verse 12 tells us, fight the good fight of faith. So what kind of fight am I to fight? The fight of faith. The devil wants you to walk in unbelief, doubt, and fear. He tells you to go by what you see, but the Bible says the just shall live by faith and not by sight. There are many people that don't want to go by the word of God. They want to go to churches that you know, sp splash water on them. They want to go where people tell them about their cell phone numbers as if the cell phone providers, the companies don't know their numbers. Here in this church, we know what is ours and we stick with the word of faith. Somebody shout, the word of faith. We speak what we believe. We are like our father. We name it as it is written and so shall it be. So instead of running around looking for miracles, miracles will come running for you. Because the miracle is incubated in the word of God. The word of God is ever pregnant to produce. For God is a God of integrity. He said the word that is going out of my mouth will never come back without fulfilling. And I decree it here today, as the word is coming out, maybe you are sick in your body. Maybe you are paralyzed. Maybe the devil has frustrated you and you feel like committing suicide. There is no need. Hold on, honey. The best has just begun. God is on your side. God is on your side. Somebody hit your neighbor. High five and say, God is on my side. Some are saying, Pastor, I just did it. I didn't feel it. Don't you know that just don't live by their feelings? For the just shall live by faith. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Hallelujah. So you need to contain for what is yours. Jude chapter number 1 verse 3. The Bible tells us contain for the faith. Take a stand for the faith. Today, we live in a time and in a world and season that even in the church of Jesus, people are no longer contending for the faith. They are mixing up their beliefs with other strange things. And God wants us to protect and preserve the legacy of his word. What the forefathers, what the prophets laid down their lives for, what the apostles laid down their lives for, and what our Lord died to purchase for us. Matthew chapter number 11, verse 12 says, From the days of John the Baptist until now, somebody shout until now. 
we are told that the kingdom of God suffers violence. And only the violent will take it back by force. Don't sit down there and say the devil is after me. He's after everybody including me. So don't whine there. Don't cry. Don't be a sissy. The Bible says the righteous are as bold as a lion. You don't have the heart of a wimp. You don't have the mind of a wimp. The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter number 2 somewhere there, it says, for we have the mind of Christ. I can do. That's what Philippians, Paul in his letter to the Philippians, he writes, Philippians 4, verse number 13, for I can do how many things? Somebody shout all things. I can love. I can give. I can forgive. I can minister deliverance. I can. If it says all things don't separate, it means everything. I can. Look your neighbor and say I can. And I'm not talking about those positive talk, pep talk that they talk in the world. I'm talking about the talk that is based on the reality of the word of God. Where heaven and earth shall pass away, but no promise of God's word will fall to the ground unfulfilled. I know people are watching us on television, but I'm talking to you that sitting here live, watching me and hearing me. Don't ever get to a time that you begin to let the devil lie to you. The one who makes the product or the manufacturer of the product knows the potential, the capability, and the capacity that the product carries. Don't ask another fellow product. Don't ask another fellow user. God who made you knows what your capabilities are, what your capacity is. Throughout the scripture we see it right from Genesis chapter 1 from verse 26. God said, let us make man in our image and in our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and over every living thing that creeps upon the face of the earth. And God created man in his image, male and female. And verse 28 says, God bless them. Somebody shout, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. If God has blessed me, I cannot be cursed. I know Africans fear witchcraft so much. If you see, there's a witch, everybody, blood of Jesus. You don't have to blood of Jesus. The blood has already been shed. Amen. And it speaks better things than the blood of Abel. All you need to, rise, to do is rise up in faith, take a stand against the devil. The Bible says, in the book of Mark chapter number 16, from verse number 17, it says, This sign shall follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out devils. Peter writes, the apostle Peter says, Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Don't be a crybaby before the devil. The devil matter has already been dealt with. Jesus said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. And he said, go so I don't go on my own when I go he goes when I sit he sits when I stand he stands when I do business he does business he says I will never leave you so why say I'm alone why say nobody cares he says I care for you he says in the book of Malachi chapter number 3 verse number 6 he says he is the Lord he does not change and that's why we, the sons of Jacob, are not consumed. When God begins a work in you, he does not only begin. Paul writes to the Philippians. He says, he who has begun the good work in you will accomplish it. So don't quit. Don't run. In the book of Ephesians, chapter number 6, when the Bible describes the whole armor, and it talks about the breastplate of righteousness, the belt of truth, the helmet of salvation, and, and, and uh, our waist, it, 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 uh, and the, the, our feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace like having sandals that are ready to go and he says do you notice most of those things regardless that you wear they are all in front because God never planned that you should fight the battle and run and turn your back God has got your back but you have to face the enemy and take back what belongs to you somebody shout by force by force so God wants us to take a stand because right from the days of John the Baptist, there's been an onslaught against the children of God. And today you have to learn to take back. The devil has been tormenting you with sickness. Don't say, my auntie died of the same disease. Thank God you said your auntie. You are not auntie. Amen. You know who you are. So you don't allow what happened to auntie to become your own experience. 
In the book of 1 Chronicles, chapter number 4, verse 9 and 10, the Bible says Jabez was more honorable than all his brethren. But the mother had an experience during his birth. And it was such an evil, negative, painful experience. And so she allowed her experience to become the tag she put out upon her son. Many of us in Africa are living out the curse that has followed the generations of our parents. We believe in worshiping the forefathers and we believe that because they were cursed, we are also cursed. Because they were poor, we are also poor. Because they were sick, we are also sick. And I'm telling you, because they did not understand the thing about technology, they could not fly with normal aeroplanes. They flew as, as witches at night. So we also accept the lie that we have, don't have the capacity to bring about technology. But I'm telling you, that story is past. Amen. There's a new generation rising out of Africa. Because Africa will look up to God. For Ethiopia will once again raise her hand. Ethiopia represents the rest of Africa. And the Bible already tells us it's our time. Somebody shout, it's our time. We have to make a difference. Your help is not abroad, but it's above. Many people think if I can just change a passport, things will be fine. And they don't know it's got nothing to do with location. It's got everything to do with who you are and who you know. It's not if you are a chicken in Namibia, you would just be a higher chicken in America. If you are a monkey here, you would just be, you know, a, 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 eh? you, you, you can't go there and have a change. You, you would just go there and be an American monkey and you would speak differently and jump differently. You would do a slant jump. But you are still the way you are because you are who you see yourself to be. Even God cannot change until you change how you see you. God says to, to, to Moses, go, tell Pharaoh, let my people go. He says, but you know I can't talk. What has talk got to do with telling Pharaoh? God said it. He created the tongue and is able to bring a miracle. And, and he spoke to Jeremiah. Jeremiah says, but I'm a kid. What has that got to do? The, in the mouth of babes and sucklings, he's ordained praise and wisdom. In the book of Psalm 133, the Bible tells us about how, you know, Psalm 127 from verse 1, except the Lord build the house, the labor in vain who build the house. Except he keep watch over the city, the watchmen will stay awake who keep watch over it. For it is vain for you to rise up early, go to bed late, only to eat the bread of sorrow. And then he goes on to say, for lo, children are a heritage from the Lord. The fruit of, his, of the womb is his reward. As, the, as arrows in a quiver and in the hands of a warrior, so are the children of one's youth. They are able to silence the enemy and the avenger at the gate. So that means children, the moment God blesses you with them, you are able to engage the enemy and put him where he belongs. Can you say amen to that? Amen. Somebody shout amen. amen. Somebody is asking what is amen. Amen means let it be, as I've just said. Exodus chapter number 1. When you read from around verse 8, the children of Israel were in bondage. So much under captivity of the, of the people of Egypt. And this was already prophesied long ago. And I won't go through the whole story. In chapter 2, from verse 23 to 25, the children of Israel began to cry out for deliverance. They could have just sat there and said, God already prophesied it, that there will be bondage. In Egypt, so we just sit down there. There are people who have accepted a condition that was not placed by God. Some people have gotten used to their problem that they are now celebrating their problem. Somebody gets into the hospital, instead of trusting God for divine touch of God for an encounter that will get them out of that sick bed, they are lying there and wishing how many more people will visit. When you visit them and you're living, they'll ask, is Auntie Jane coming? And they're lying down there, all they're expecting is to drink free juice, to eat free Kentucky, and whatever is being presented to them. Life outside the hospital, no matter what menu they have in the hospital, there's no be better joy than being outside than being on a defined, you know, kind of confined to a hospital bed. And I see here today, People that God is causing to have an encounter with him that you will not sit celebrating your former problem. That problem has come to pass. Look your neighbor and say, don't celebrate your problem. It came to pass. Tell your neighbor, don't celebrate your problem. It's not yours. Give it back to the enemy. In the book of Genesis chapter 27, 
from verse 1 to 29. Here, Jacob was a smart boy. He, he wanted to take, he knows in Israel, for you to really have a, the inheritance, you have to be the first son. So he went after this, his brother who was, you know, a, 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 a boy who was not smart. He was naive. He, 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 he didn't understand what it means to take a right, take a stand for what is yours. He, he just, when, when the devil starts to punch him or situation, he just said, what will be, will be. And that may be the situation of some of us. And that's why we are suffering what we are suffering. So here, Jacob stole his brother's birthright. And when you read Genesis 27 from verse 38 to 40, we are also told that after the birthright was stolen, God had to meet Esau when Esau was complaining and frustrated later. Because he noticed he lost, first of all, his birthright and then lost the father's blessing. So he kept crying, Father, don't you have more blessing? So the father said, I'm giving it to your brother. But finally, the father looked at the boy and said, listen, what will break the yoke of your brother over you? This continuous stay in bondage, we on, you will only get out of it when you become irritated, become sick of being tormented, being frustrated, being you know, uh, uh, under the oppression, then you will break your brother's yoke off you. And whatever you don't like, you can fix. Whatever you don't want to be around you, you have the right to chase it. Can somebody say amen? And as we continue, Jacob was looking for a wife. Now he was running, he ran from his brother and went to stay with Laban. And there he wanted to marry. And he worked so hard for this beautiful girl called Rachel. And instead of getting Rachel, he ends up getting Leah. And that was not the prophet will. If it's somebody that would have just said, well, wife is wife. But you know, when God gives gifts, the Bible says every good and every perfect gift comes from above, from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. James chapter 1 verse 17. And when you read Proverbs chapter 10 verse 22, the Bible says the blessings of the Lord make it rich and he added no sorrow. When God gives you any blessing or any gift, it's always the best. Somebody shout, God gives the best. Sickness cannot be the best. You hear some people saying, God gave me sickness to make me humble. Now, if following God, his word cannot make you humble, sickness cannot. Because sickness makes you feel painful. And, and you go to the hospital. If it's a gift from God, why do you let you and the doctor cooperate together to take away God's gift? You see, people will say, it's a gift. Some people say, God made me poor to teach me a lesson. And then small time, you carry placard and say, government, increase my salary or give me a job. I thought that is a gift from God. Just enjoy your poverty into the grave. But God gives us the best. Somebody shout the best. The Bible tells us that all things are yours. 1 Corinthians chapter number 3 verse 21. It says everything is yours. God did not spare his own son, but he gave him up all for us. Shall he not together with him freely give us all things? Romans chapter number 8 and verse number 32. He didn't hold Jesus back. He gave him for you. So every other thing that you need for life and godliness has already been provided. That's what the Bible tells us in the book of uh, Peter. So it's important for you to know that you need to take a stand. Touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, take a stand. So Jacob, after seven years, he got the wrong woman. He was determined, I want to get the one, my perfect. I don't want the permissive. I don't want the second class. I don't want the, the second choice. I want the first choice. I know the woman I like. I know how she was. Now, at night, that man must have been so worked up like some Africans that, that how can you be sleeping a woman with a woman and you don't know who she is? Now, I know maybe because there was no electricity. But at least you should have heard from the voice because they were not twins. But some men, when they're really in that gear, they, they, they sleep with anything they can find. But I know those men are not watching me today. 
And if they are watching, may God help you and have mercy upon you. Hallelujah. When you read the book of Isaiah 66, from around verse 8, 9 and upward, the Bible tells us that who has had such a thing? Will a nation be born at once? It's not possible. It takes, it takes effort. It's going to take time. But, but something has to happen. And it says, as soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth. So in life, for you to gain delivery of your blessing, there has to be some travail. You don't have a child. You don't whine and complain. You don't look at your husband like Hannah was saying. He, he, she, she kept being distant on her husband. Give me child. Give me child. As if the husband manufactures children. But the time she realized that it's enough of nagging, it's enough of being frustrated. It's enough of staying away from church. And the day she decided, I'm going back to church, even though there was no church that day. She entered the church. She began to cry. Oh, God. It's, I've been against my husband. Uh, Penina has fought me, my, my rival. And I was fighting her back. I criticized. I tried the witch doctor. I did this, but it, I'm sick and tired. I know you created. You give children. They don't come from human beings. They don't come from false prophets. They come from you. It comes through the power of your word. And she was, it got to a time her words couldn't come out. She was just... And the prophet said, she must be drunk. Like some church members drunk before, drunk before they came here today. She must be drunk. She said, my master, even if he's drinking, this is too early. I'm not drunk, but I'm pouring the anguish of my heart. You can get to a time that even if there's no prayer meeting, but you want to meet with God, you create a meeting place where you groan. Oh God, I will not leave you until you bless me. Are you not the one that created children? Are you not the one that made the womb? You will put something in the womb. Are you not the one that made them male and female? Why must I be alone at 35? I wanted to marry at 23. It's 10 years over time. Oh God, find a man, whether it's an Angolan or a DRC, whether it's a from Europe, whether it's a Chinese, Lord, just bring my husband. And I'm telling you, when you cry like that, that even the devil can't stop you. You must get to a time that you are tired. Don't sit down there and just say, this, the devil, God will punish this world. He will not punish me. I'm not your problem. We are not your problem. Take a stand. Somebody say, take a stand. Don't sit down there and be whining, complaining, and groaning. Why me, Lord? Some people accuse God, who is their only helper. Lord, when will you heal me? Did he put sickness on you? Lord, Lord, when will you give me my own? He's giving you all things. What you need to do is position yourself and say, Hey, ignorance is bad. So I had the blessing all along. And I didn't know, and I was running helter and skelter from pillar to post. And I didn't know God has given me all things. Today, I take my stand like Hannah did. Guess what? The prophet finally looked at her and said, uh, I think something is happening here. I don't quite understand it. I don't discern it. But you and God, by this time next year, you have your child. The miracle happened. I prophesied miracle here. There are women that are watching me all over Africa that have been trusting God. Some of you, the relatives of your husband have told, told them to divorce you because in Africa, people think the whole thing about marriage, if there are no children, there should be no marriage. But marriage is from because of love, not because of children. However, part of the blessing that God brings to confirm that he is in the picture is children. But the fact that it is delayed does not mean that you, God is against you. So don't listen to the lies of the devil. I prophesy that by the time of life, this time next year, you'll be holding your own baby. Not long, I mean some years ago, I was somewhere ministering and ladies come lining up close to about 15 or so and they were trusting God for the fruit of the womb. And as I prayed for them, I told them, go and buy your you know, the clothes of the kind of children you want. A year after I was walking down the street, a woman ran to me with a, a boy, a, a little boy. A few years after. And then she said, Pastor, Pastor, I, I didn't know this woman. I asked, who are you? 
She said, I'm the woman you prayed for, for a child. And I said, where? And she said, in that meeting where we were many women and I was one of them, you told us to go and buy our clothes. I went and bought and see my child now. Now, that didn't come through the witch doctor. That came because that woman believed God. And I want to prophesy to somebody, yours may not be a child, it may be a job. Yours may not be a job, it may be healing. Yours may not be healing, it may just be just having peace on your mind. Yours may not be peace, it may be a relationship that is gone haywire. Yours may not even be that, it may just be general stress. Where life has beaten you so much, you feel like it's not worth living. But I want to prophesy to you that the best is here. I say the best is yet. The devil is a liar. Whatever God is doing and has started doing in your life, no devil can reverse it. I prophesy the joy of the Lord is your strength. I prophesy that the blessings of the Lord will come upon you and overtake you. Whatever you have struggled with from now on, will you go back there, success is yours. Victory is yours. I decree and declare that healing is yours. Long life is yours. I decree and I prophesy the devil is under your feet. Somebody jump and say the devil is under my feet. Did you hear what I said? Somebody jump. I didn't say sit and say it in your heart. Simple instruction. Say the devil is under my feet. Somebody do like, like you are stamping the devil. Do like you are stamping the devil. And say sickness is under my feet. Poverty is under my feet. Whatever else you want to say. Somebody go ahead and prophesy. Go ahead and prophesy. Take it back by force. Take it back by force. Your deliverance by force. Your joy by force. Everything that is yours by force. By force, by force. I prophesy to you the baby is coming out. That destiny is being bought. That job is being bought. That healing is being bought. They told you you are HIV positive. Don't accept that sentence. God, through Jesus Christ, already said, By my stripes you are healed. When he hung on the cross, he said, it is finished. He never said, I am finished. The devil thought he was finished. But that was a setup for your comeback. Can you say amen? amen? So, it's important for you to push. I say his name is who? Who died for you? Who loved you when you were still dead in sins? Who took your place on the cross? Who understands you more than anyone? Oh, my Jesus. Oh, Lord Jesus. As you prepare to pray, I just sense, I I, I feel like singing this song. Jesus. Raise your two hands above your head and sing. Jesus. Jesus. Hey, sing Jesus. Africa, join us as we sing this song, Jesus. If you can stand on your feet, stand and join us. You may be in your sitting room. Join us as we sing. Sing Jesus. I want to. Just worship that name. Oh, sweet Jesus. The name above every name. There's healing in that name. There is deliverance in that name. Jesus, 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 hey, Jesus, uh-huh. let your whole heart, let everything within you connect with the song.
right now, in this attitude, you're sick in your body. It doesn't matter for how long it's been there. There are people that have a condition in their body where you're unable to move a certain part. It could be your, your shoulder, it could be your waist, it, or any part, whatever. It, it may be a tightness in your joints. Let me see your hands. You feel some tightness somewhere where you can't move it right. Just run here quickly. And let me have some people to, to help me come here. I want to touch you where that pain is. And God is going to heal you right now. There's something you can't move. Maybe it's your knee or your waist. You can't bend very well. Or it's, it's around your arm. You can't raise it up. Come, come, come stand here. I want to start with you. For how long? Can I have somebody to help me? I'm going to pray for you right now. And the moment I finish praying, it's amazing. So many people on the, with this condition. And I'm going to pray. And the moment I finish praying, try to do what you couldn't do before. Because they, are, they encounter grace and the anointing of God is going to connect with you and touch you where the pain is. Are we ready? Get, oh, you get a mic? Now, Father, in the name of Jesus, I release the anointing of God to touch them where the, the stiffness is, where the pain is, where the weakness is, the inability, whatever it is, tightness. I command right now, be healed. Be healed. Be healed. In the name of Jesus. As I touch you, begin to do what you couldn't do before. Try to do what you couldn't do before. We're going to check you right now. We're going to check you right now. Thank you. That's it. Take the anointing. Take the anointing. Shake, Jesus. That's it. Try to do what you couldn't do. Try. Try, try. Check it, check it. If it's gone, come here. Come and tell me. If you don't feel it, it's gone. It's no more there. Try to do it. Check. Okay, okay. Let, let's just hear this family. What was your problem? What was your problem? Tell them. I feel on the joints. What, what, how long was it there? How long? Very long time. How maybe long is very long? Maybe three months. Three months. But now it's gone? Yeah. You don't feel any pain? I don't feel any pain. Do Hallelujah. It will never come back again in the name. Oh, Jesus. Who else? Check, check. What, what was your problem? I fell down. It was difficult to bend my knee. For how long was that? Uh, two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Yes. And when you came here, it was still a problem? Yes. It was. How do you feel now? Now it's okay. You can bend? Yes, jump, jump. Okay. Hallelujah. Give the Lord praise. Never again. Oh, 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 Jesus. Don't fall, please. Don't fall. What was your problem? My throat problem. So talk, talk to them. I had a throat problem. I couldn't swallow my saliva. Now I can swallow. I don't feel any pain anymore. Hallelujah. Amen. Try to swallow again. No pain. No pain. Don't feel any pain. Give the Lord praise. Never again. In the name of oh, Jesus. What was your problem? I'll pain tell them. Tell them. Let's talk to legs. the microphone. They are watching you. I was having a pain in my legs. Huh? It's okay now. You were having what? Where? Yeah, in the All here. Yeah. And where is the pain now? No, it's gone. It's gone. Can yeah. you do this? Do you feel any pain? No. Never, never to come back again in the name of Jesus. Who else? Who else? Quickly, check yourself. Check yourself. Where is your Where's yeah, your problem? Yeah, I had a, uh, a problem on my back. On now, where? Uh, starting from last year, but now uh, I'm so, feeling so okay just now. Reduce. Huh? Yeah, I had a uh, problem on my back, uh -huh. but now I'm feeling okay. Your I, back, I, I, I how long yeah. was it? Uh, since last year. I'm, uh, since last year, you couldn't yes. bend before very well. Yes, yes, yeah, but now it's okay. Uh, so can we bend? Yeah. Do you feel any pain? No, nothing. Do this? Yes. Are you a sports person? Yes. Oh, you do sports? Yes. Okay, may God give you more energy. Go back to your sports. <laughs> Amen. What was your problem? Um, Don't problem just be watching. Is... God is still touching people where you are. I don't have to call your case. Uh -huh. My problem is I twisted my ankle last week while playing netball and yesterday I heard it again and it, it's swollen. And, and, 
So, but what you, when you used to move, you were feeling pain? Yes, I'm still feeling pain right now. Even now? Yes. Oh, but then why did you come? I'm asking those that don't feel their pain. Okay, okay, it's fine. Go! In Jesus' name. Go! In Jesus' name. Now, stamp on it. Stamp. Try to stamp. Stamp. I want to look for the pain. I want to look for the pain. What happened? No, no, what happened? I can't feel the pain. No, look for it, look for it, look for it. Stamp, stamp. You said even here you were here feeling it. What happened? Eh? I can't feel the pain. Let's give the Lord a praise. Take it, never again. Hey, in Jesus. Jesus. Lady, what was your problem? My problem, it was joint paining. I never live without drinking any tablets. And this morning, I didn't take any tablets. When you prayed on me, I was feeling so weak in my bones. But now, I'm just fine. Oh, Lord Jesus, in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Never again. In Oh, Jesus. Please, don't let people fall. We are not trying to. Any other person? Check, check yourself. What was your problem? So, yeah, last year, I broke my arm. Okay. Uh, it's cute, yeah. but sometimes if you move, okay. you take heavy things, you, you feel some pain. I okay. needed that prayer. Yeah. Okay. Father, from today, this thing is completely healed. Never again in Jesus' name. Wait for this. I know our time is gone, but I need to do this quickly. You, the rest of you just wait. Start it. Go. go. It's done. There's somebody, you lost your sense of smell. You can't smell again. Anybody? Anybody? Or if you are watching by way of television, touch your nose and I command restoration. And if there's somebody like that yet, you come to me, it will be restored. You will be able to smell again. Father, in the name of Jesus, I touch those people watching by way of television, including those that have paralysis or inabilities to move. I command in Jesus' name, be healed. Be delivered. Oh, that's it. It's done. It's done. Begin to thank God. Wave your hand above your head and receive your miracle. You lost your sense of smell? Come, come here quickly. Come. There are people, there's one of your ears, you feel like water. Sometimes it feels like, like wind. Where, where are those people? Come, come here quickly. Rush here. Rush here. You, you feel like water and you keep doing this to get it off and it doesn't go off. And sometimes you hear like wind going or like the moving of a sea. Father, if those people are watching, I command, receive your healing in the net touch. Just reach out and touch your finger in Jesus' name. As I'm touching mine right now, dip your whichever ear it is. But I'm doing with the two in case yours is left or right. In the name of Jesus, open in Jesus' name. And if you're here, you have that condition, come here. Life, I will trust. Open. Open in Jesus' name. Anybody with uh, the perfume or something? It's done. Family, do you believe it's done? Do you believe the encounter is here? What happened? Okay, I, I want to find out how long was this condition? Um, it started in 2010. 2010? Yes. And you lost your sense of smell? Yes. Uh, sometimes one of my, 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 my nostrils will get blocked. We even get blocked? Yeah. Okay. So you believe that God is here to touch you? Yes. You believe that? Yes. Amen. Family, do we believe that? In the name above every name, the name of Jesus, I unblock this nose and I restore his ability to smell. In Jesus' name, Amen. What happened? Yes, I, I, I can smell. I can smell. Even, okay, let's check the distance. T -t -t Tell us, where I can say what you can, if you can smell, say yes, I can smell. Yes, I can smell. Yes. Yes. Let's give the Lord praise. 
Let's give the Lord praise. Hallelujah. Never again. Ne oh, dead. Jesus. Jesus. Somebody, you lost your sense of taste. I don't know why. Senses have been restored. Taste. You can't taste again. You don't know when something is bitter or, or sour. Or, and Lord, if those people, because sometimes it may be people watching by way of television. Father, I pray right now for those people that are watching, anyone that has lost the sense of taste, restore right now in the name of Jesus. The rest of you, whatever be your condition, raise up your hand wherever you are and I want to pray with you right now. Wherever the problem is, Father, in the name of Jesus, I release the healing anointing. The healing anointing. Receive your miracle right now. Receive your miracle right now. Whatever be that need you have. Maybe I never mentioned yours, but God knows it by name. Receive that encounter from the Holy Spirit. Receive your healing. Receive your healing. Receive your breakthrough. Receive that encounter of a lifetime. In the name of Jesus. Wow, my God. Wasn't that wonderful? I am sure you had church right there in your living room or wherever you watched us from. It was truly an encounter. I was mightily blessed. I, I'm telling you, we almost couldn't close that service because of the things God was doing. I mean, we, you saw the miracles that God did. You saw the flow of the word of God in a season and time when people are running after miracles, not running after the power of God. Uh, you, you see, God confirms his word, not just our stories. And I'm very sure that you were mightily blessed. But before we go off air, uh, uh, there may be somebody out there and, and you have questions. You've got doubts and you're trusting God and you're asking, can I also have an encounter with God right in my sitting room or right in my bedroom or wherever you may be? Yes, you can. That's why we came live. I mean, we, we came with this service so that we can also touch you there in your home. I thank my dear friend, uh, Dr. Andre and his wonderful wife, Dr. Jenny Robert. I mean, these are great friends since I knew them. I mean, they've been doing a great job. And with what God is doing through Faith Broadcasting Network, I'm telling you, is the channel for Africa by Africans reaching the rest of the world. And that's why I partner with my wonderful friend, Dr. Andre and, and Dr. Jenny, so that we can touch the rest of the world. And we are so blessed that they gave us this slot so that we can also just be a blessing to the, to the whole of Africa and the other parts of the world that are watching. So, but we, as I said, before we go off air, I want to pray for somebody that's out there. You haven't given your heart to Jesus. As you sat there, you enjoy the service, but you are just saying, or maybe you felt in your heart, I wish this can go on. You know, this peace, this joy, this excitement, this, this, this environment of warmth that I felt during this service. I, I just wish it's something that can go on throughout my life. Yes, that's the promise of God. And I'm sure you're going to receive that. So if you want Jesus to come into your heart, I'm going to just lead you in a brief prayer. Why don't you repeat these words after me? Say, Jesus, thank you for loving me. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. I believe in my heart that you died to set me free and give me a new life. Thank you for shedding your blood for the forgiveness of my sins. Today, I invite you Come inside my heart. Forgive me all my sins. Make me a child of God. Thank you, Father, for hearing my prayers. Thank you, Jesus, for coming into my heart. From today, I am born again. I'm a child of God. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. If you pray this prayer, friend, I want you to know that it all just has to do with faith. The Bible says with the heart one believes unto righteousness, but with the mouth confession is made to bring about salvation, which has to do with safety, has to do with protection, has to do with provision. So everything about your life in just these simple words of prayer, I'm telling you a transformation has taken place. You may not have you know, a change in height or a change in complexion, but something happened in your spirit, man. 
you are no longer the same man, no longer the same woman or the same boy or girl. I am now speaking to somebody that has never existed, created brand new. So I celebrate you and I say congratulations on your newfound faith. You can call on Faith Broadcasting Network. There is a number that I, I, you will see on the screen. There are people that are going to pray with you and give you further help and guidance as how you can stand and be strong in the Lord and possibly send you material that is going to be of help and of benefit to help you grow in Christ. It was really wonderful speaking to you today. Before we go off air, maybe somebody wants to contact us, uh, uh, contact me personally, or you want to come fellowship with us at Jesus Center here in Ombili or Kuriangava, Vinduk, or any of our branches around Namibia or in Angola or wherever we may be. So I want to invite you to join us. I have books, I have different materials, the CDs, my daughter Maranatha, great singer, her CD will soon be out, and, and, and when it's out, you get it. And, and my books are already out, so you place your order, they will let you know. Call us and we will tell you, there's, there's a number there, just call us and we are here to serve you. Maybe you're saying, but are you going to stop without praying for me? I was just about to do that. Why don't you, whatever you're going through, it could be you lost your job, it could be a challenge in your marriage, or maybe sickness in your body, whatever may be the situation, hey, we serve a good God with whom all things are possible. Let's agree together. Father, as we close this broadcast today, I pray for every man and every woman that has been part of this broadcast. Whatever may be their need, let it be emotional, let it be spiritual, let it be social, let it be economical. The power in the name of Jesus and in the blood of Jesus, he paid for everything when he said he hung on the cross and said it is finished. He meant it is finished with every work of the devil. So right now, I command you free, you are released from every chain and every shackle, every sickness every pain, every torment and bondage of the devil is broken right now. I set you free in Jesus' name. Go ahead, celebrate the goodness of the Lord and enjoy your liberty. We will come to you again another time when God blesses us with another slot. God bless you. Today's message on CD or DVD, please call plus 264-61-245-001 or visit us at www.greaterlovecenter.org. Our postal address is PO Box 21299, Vinduk, Namibia. Or you can email us at info at greaterlovecenter.org. 